For today's presentation, we're going to go through how to calculate development length in accordance with the building code requirements for masonry structures. So our first FAQ, what tools are available for calculating development length in accordance with the TMS 402 2013 code document? Some of the tools that we have available are the code itself, the MIM lap splice tables, the MIM lap splice calculator, which we'll go through, and the NCMA CMU unit strength method calculator. If you're new to calculating development length, the quickest and easiest reference would be the MIM lap splice tables. And if we want to find those on our website, we can go to masoneryinfo.org, which I have up. And if we go under engineers and we go to structural masonry details, we have a table available here called lap splice table. You can hit download PDF and you have tables available for bars centered in wall or for bars placed at a maximum D based on these diagrams shown below. So how do we calculate development length? The development length equations are actually included in both chapters eight and nine of the TMS 402 document, which are allowable stress design and strength design. If we look at these two chapters, we can see that the language is virtually identical. It has the same equation, same variables, which is good. So our calculated development length will be valid for both the ASD or strength design methodology. Again, when we look at our lap splice requirements, all of the factors and all of the language is the same in both chapters. Both chapters allow for bars to be spliced by non-contact lap splice, as long as they're not further apart than one fifth of the required length of the lap or eight inches. For mechanical and welded splices, they're required to develop at least 125% of the specified yield strength of the bar. And the reason for that is that these equations, which we just went through, are actually based on developing 125% the yield strength of the bar. Why is this virtually the same? Well, there's a reason that we've gone from 40 pages to 400 pages in the code, and sometimes that's because we repeat ourselves. So as we look at the equation, we can see that the variables are the nominal diameter of the reinforcement, the specified yield strength, reinforcement size factor, a dimension used to calculate reinforcement development, and the specified compressive strength of clay or concrete masonry. So as we look into it, the nominal bar diameter of reinforcement is a known value. People usually remember it by the 1 8 rule. So for a number five bar, the bar diameter would be 5 8 of an inch or 0 0.65 inches. The FY, the specified yield strength of the steel reinforcement is typically grade 60, which would be 60,000 PSI, although other values are available, um, but 60,000 is commonly what we see and what is used in design. The gamma factor, the reinforcement size factor is defined in the lap splice equation, and it's given as one for number three through number five bars, 1.5 three for number six through number seven bars, and 1.5 for number eight and number nine bars. The K dimension, which is the dimension used to calculate reinforcement development, is defined as K shall not exceed the smallest of the following, the minimum masonry cover, the clear spacing between adjacent reinforcement places, or nine times the bar diameter. So nine times the bar diameter is a directly calculated value. The clear spacing between adjacent reinforcement splices, if we're looking at the base of the wall, would typically be the rebar spacing. Since we're going to have a splice right at the base of the wall, that would be the value we would use. And the minimum masonry cover, uh, we actually have defined on our website. And so if we have a bar centered in the wall, we can see that the minimum masonry cover would be the distance from the outside base of the block to the face of the reinforcement. As we get into double reinforced areas, we have to think about it a little bit more, um, especially if our specifications require use of rebar positioners. Rebar positioners, for instance, this is one from wire bond, often determine where that bar is going to be located in the cell. Um, going through a lot of the different rebar positioners, it's typically about two and five eighths is where that bar is gonna be located but just something that you're going to want to be aware of when you're calculating your lap length. And lastly, we have our FM prime, the specified impressive strength of clay or concrete masonry. So this table is directly out of the TMS document, 
and based on a CMU compressive strength, which they test in the lab, and the type of mortar we're using on our project, we can determine what our FM prime value is. Pretty common, we see 2000 specified on drawings, although we can go up higher. Um, and we'll get into that a little bit more as we talk through our calculator. Any questions, you can direct them to MIM. We have our phone number listed here, as well as our website. And I'd be happy to work with you. So getting into the calculator. First, I wanted to bring up a block strength report. This particular report was from 2019, tested by SME. We can see that our average compressive strength is 4190. Uh, if we look back at our table, we can see that 4190 is not one of the values, which is fine because we're allowed to linear interpolate any of these values for FM prime. So NCMA has a unit strength calculator available on their website, which is a pretty simple Excel sheet, very easy to use. So if we're under the 2013 TMS document, we can set, select this cell, whether we want a specified compressive strength of masonry, or if we want our compressive strength of CMU. So in this case, we have a compressive strength of CMU. From that report, we have 4190, so we'll input that here. Let's say we're using type S mortar. Okay, sounds good, uh, an eight inch block. All right, so our FM prime is actually 2,880 for this eight inch unit. Pretty significantly higher than the 2,000 minimum we typically see used. Designers can use this in design if they know that this block is being used on that project to get a more economical rebar spacing. But for those cases of this presentation, we're just gonna talk about um, lap length. So the, the MIM, CMU lap splice calculator is also available on our website. It's a pretty simple to use calculator. And so we're going to select a few things here, which we'll talk through. And at the bottom, it's going to tabulate our development length. So to use this calculator, we select our bar number. And so for this project, let's say we have number five reinforcement, select number five there. Um, let's say we have an eight inch block. So from this nominal block thickness, we have a drop down where we can select six inch, eight inch, 10 inch, 12 inch, 14, or 16 inch block. So we'll select eight inch block for this project. The cell below is going to automatically calculate the cover if that bar is centered in the wall, just for reference for an engineer or a contractor. If it's anything other than that, for instance, if we're doubly reinforced, we can spe <clears throat> specify where that bar is. And then the uh, two cells below, it's going to calculate that cover to really figure out that K value. So for this instance, let's say we have a bar centered in that eight inch block. So you can put 3.8125 in here and our cover is going to be three and a half inches. And we can see down here that our K value is going to be the minimum of that nine bar diameter, our clear space between adjacent laps or this number. So in this instance, it's using that three and a half inches. For this example, let's say we have eight in, no, number five bars at 48 inches on center. So we can put 48 here. This is going to figure out what our nine CB is. RFY, as I mentioned, we typically have grade 60 reinforcement, so we can leave that at 60,000 PSI. Our gamma value, our size factor, is automatically going to calculate based upon which bar number we select here. And for FM prime, if you remember, we had 2880, so we can put that here. And it's going to calculate our development length based upon those inputs. So as we can see here, the development length has been calculated as just a hair over 16 inches. So that would be the TMS 402 required lap length for this number five bar centered in an eight inch block with that specific block compressive strength. And if you remember from the development length code language, it's limited to either this equation or 12 inches. And so there is a minimum value in this cell where if it's below 12 inches, it's automatically going to show 12 inches here. The cell below this calculated development length calculates the development length required by a document called the standard practice for bracing masonry walls under construction. So for walls to be considered internally braced during construction and provide construction safety for all those on the job site, they require a minimum development length that can basically be boiled down to 48 bar diameters. And so if you look at this cell here, it's basically taking 48 times that bar diameter and populating it here. And so if you're a mason contractor on a job site, using internal wall bracing. Um, hopefully you have a wall bracing plan and are complying with MIOSHA. This would be the value required out of the standard practice for those lap splices. 
for engineering purposes, the required development length would only be 16 inches, um, but it might be worthwhile to have that 30 inch length on the job site just to promote construction safety. And our tables available on our website, which I went through very briefly, are the minimum of either that code calculated lap splice length or this 48 bar diameter. And values listed in bold, as it defines here, are based on the 2013 TMS document. And all of the other values in this table are where that minimum 48 bar diameter is controlled. Hopefully this helps. And if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Thank you.